All right, everyone, we are now going out to Michigan here where parents of the accused Oxford High School shooter uh, do in court here. You're seeing them right now for a probable cause hearing. Jennifer and James Crumbly will be in front of Judge Julie Nicholson. Let's l watch and listen right here on Live Now from Fox. Sir, you can have a seat. Okay, calling uh, docket number 21006652, People versus Jennifer Crumbly, and docket number 21006651, People versus James Crumbly. Please put appearances on the record, starting with the prosecuting attorney. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Karen McDonald, appearing on behalf of the people of the state of Michigan. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Markeisha Washington, appearing on behalf of the people. Good afternoon, Your Honor. I'm Shannon Smith, on behalf of both Jennifer and James Crumbly. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Marielle Lehman on behalf of Jennifer and James Crumbly. Okay, today is the date and time set for a probable cause conference. Before we begin the probable cause conference, I also I just want to place on the record again and advise both defendants. Um, do you understand that um, you do have the right to retain your own individual counsel? And since you are co-defendants in this case, um, if a conflict exists and or arises, um, you may want to have your own independent counsel. Do you understand that, Ms. Crumbly? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand that, Mr. Crumbly? Yes, Your Honor. Attorneys, um, can you advise the court and tell the court whether or not you believe a conflict exists as it relates to your representation of these defendants at the same time? Your Honor, we have gone over this extensively within our office and with our clients. At this time, there is not a conflict. We have addressed if a potential conflict, how that could arise. Uh, we don't anticipate that's going to happen. We have actually executed a written waiver of any potential conflict with our clients. We have gone over it over and over, repeatedly. Okay, and you both understand it's your obligation to advise the court at any point in time during the course of these proceedings, including not just the preliminary examination, but up in the circuit court, if it goes to that point, of any conflict at the point that you recognize that one exists. Do you understand that? We absolutely do. Thank you. We okay, do, and, know, and knowing all that, I do want, I'm sorry, go ahead, Maureen. I said we do, Your Honor. Okay. Um, Ms. Crumbly, and knowing all that, do you still want to proceed today with these attorneys? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Crumbly, do you want to still proceed today with these attorneys? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right, let's go ahead. And uh, as far as the probable cause conference is concerned, um, go ahead. Do you have any resolution on this case? May I remove my mask to speak, Your Honor? Go ahead. I'm Karen McDonald on behalf of the people. Your Honor, uh, as you are no doubt aware, on November 30th, 20, 2021, in Oxford High School, Four children were murdered, six children and one teacher were shot. Hundreds of others were terrorized. Approximately 300 officers responded to the area, including representatives from at least 26 agencies, at least 11 fire departments responded. The volume of discovery in this case is staggering. It includes a tremendous number of police reports, digital evidence, photographs, search warrant returns, ATF reports, FBI reports, witness statements, and recorded interviews. This case is unprecedented in Oakland County and perhaps the state. It is unlike any other case, and given that, we submit that the typical protocols for discovery and the normal time frames for a preliminary examination will not allow adequate time for the prosecution or the defense, for that matter, to adequately prepare. The parties signed and submitted a stipulated protective order regarding discovery for the court's signature. I will note for the record that the people and our position is that we that those sensitive digital and video material that indicate the actual uh, shooting and injuries will not be released and can be viewed um, at our office and defense counsel agrees we've also put in place a protective order for all the rest of the 
uh, evidence and documents so that it's not leaked on behalf of the, the victims in this case. Once counsel agreed to do that, we tendered approximately 500 pages of discovery, which I'm told they were um, in possession of late afternoon, yesterday. That was simply the first wave of data that we have, Your Honor. We received another 40 gigabytes of data consisting of additional reports, recordings of witness interviews, surveillance videos, and witness statements, all of which must be reviewed and tendered. So we do not have all of the discovery. We, we approximate, we, we probably have a third of it. As, as you know, there are a lot of um, witnesses to interview, and that is ongoing. The Oakland County, Oakland County Sheriff's Office has been working around the clock to provide us with digital evidence obtained from electronic devices seized during this investigation. That evidence will be voluminous as well, and we don't have it in our possession. Um, our detective um, here, the officer in charge, can tell you he's worked around the clock, and most of his agency has as well, as well as other agencies. As a result, we're asking this court to find good cause to wait 20, the 21 days and adjourn the probable cause conference until after the new year to allow the parties to receive and review these statements. We anticipate being ready to present um, the preliminary exam uh, in February, Your Honor. And lastly, as the court knows, these children's and family, these funerals have just recently concluded. The prosecutor's office has a lot of work to do with a lot of the, the victims and the families and we do not think it's in their best interest or the, in the interest of justice to do that during the holiday season. Um, there are several witnesses to prepare, and we want to make sure that we're, we are prepared to go forward on the date and time set for the preliminary examination. We anticipate that it will be 15 to 20 witnesses and that it will take three to five days. Anything on behalf of the defense attorneys relative to the request, uh, number one, for the request for the adjournment for the preliminary examination, as well as number two, any re, uh, you want to place the stipulation on the record as it relates to the requested protective order? Uh, good afternoon, Your Honor. The defense does acknowledge receipt of the discovery that the prosecutor described. We are not objecting to the adjournment. In fact, we're joining in the request for the adjournment. And we did um, review and sign the, the protective order. We don't have any objection to the protective order. Um, so I do have a, a copy of a protective order that was provided to the court on December 13th at about 11.30 a.m. Um, for each case based upon the stipulations that were placed upon the record by both attorneys. Um, I will go ahead and sign that protective order for both cases. As far as the request for the adjournment is concerned, can I have uh, both the defense attorneys and the prosecutor approach the bench? We have a sidebar a moment here with the prosecution and the defense with the judge. And you are taking a look right now at Jennifer and James Crumbly. It looks like uh, James breaking down right there as he's sitting down looking at his wife. And really the, uh, the whole situation really becomes reality that for them as they hear uh, the prosecutor go uh, talk about uh, the different types of witnesses that they will be interviewing, 15 to 20 you heard. It looks like now uh, James is uh, communicating with his wife here. And, uh, and you could see from the uh, deputy there trying to tell him, I can't do that right here. You got to stay focused there and not talk uh, to your wife. So we will continue to see what comes of this. Stay right here with us on live now from Fox of the Probable Cause hearing for Jennifer and James Crumbly. You're watching always live now from Fox. This is raw, live, and unfiltered here. As you can see, we give you the uh, shots just like we get them when we pump them right out to you. Like if you were in the courtroom, you're not going to miss a moment. We don't do sound bites here. A couple of second sound bites. No, we'll just play it out for you in full right here on live now from Fox. I'm not, I'm not Oh, no, one more thing. Do you need another piece of PD or not? I don't think I need 
I don't think we do. We just continue to talk. Yeah, right. No, we have been in it. We have been in it. They've been also in the world talking about it. Yeah. Okay. After discussion, we have been in it. Okay, after discussions with all counsel at the bench relative to um, the preliminary examination, which, by the way, is currently scheduled for the 22nd of December, um, there has been a request for an adjournment. Both parties are stipulating or have agreed to that request. I do need to place the waiver on the record. Um, Ms. Crum Mr. Crumbly, is he ready? Yes. Mr. Crumbly. Do you understand that you do have a right to a preliminary examination within 14 to 21 days of the date of the arraignment? And that if I grant the request for the adjournment of the preliminary examination, you will not have it during that period of time. Do you understand that? Yes, I do, Your Honor. And are you willing to waive that right at this time? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Okay. And Ms. Crumbley, do you also understand that you do have a right to a preliminary examination within 14 to 21 days of the date of the arraignment? And that if I grant the request for the adjournment, you will not have your preliminary examination within that period of time. Do you understand that right? Yes, sir. And are you willing to waive that right? Yes, sir. Okay. The court will go ahead and reset the preliminary examination for February 8th at 115. At this time, I am, uh, that's the only date I'm giving you. If it appears that we need additional days, then we'll deal with that on the 8th. Um, based upon the availability of the court's calendar. Um, please uh, make sure that you are all prepared to proceed to exam on that date and time with appropriate exhibits. Um, if you want to have exhibits marked ahead of time, all you need to do is contact my court recorder and that can, um, you can have that accomplished. Okay, any argument on Ben? Your Honor, not at this time. Um, however, the defense will likely be filing a motion re regarding Ben. You're going to file a motion regarding bond? Yes. Okay. Um, well, file that motion, and then is that something you want the court to address on the 8th? Um, Your Honor, is there a possibility of getting a motion date before the 8th? Are you doing one for sure? Yes. Are you definitely yeah, filing I, a written we motion? We just need to get a little bit more of the discovery, but yes. When do you anticipate that you'll be filing that? Um, it depends when we get some discovery, hopefully within a week. To January 7th at 1.15. Um, if you uh, file a motion, make sure you comply with the Michigan Court Rules in terms of filing the motion and providing the judge's copy. If there's a response, then the prosecutor must also comply with the court rules in terms of filing the response. Okay, anything else? No, thank you, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Okay, we're adjourned.